five mistakes you're making in your Zoho CRM build. Hi, I'm Avon, CRM and marketing automation specialist at Relevate. And today I'm gonna to be talking about the top five mistakes that we see when people are building out their Zoho CRM. A lot of these mistakes seem okay at the time whilst you're building out your application and you think that you're doing it the right way. All of a sudden you realize you're missing something. You can't add more fields, you can't click certain things, workflow stop working, automation stop working. It's really important to get the right foundations when building your Zoho instance. Sometimes those mistakes made early on can really cause problems for you later down the track. And that means expensive rebuilds, having to reconfigure the system, exporting information, re-importing information. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you the mistakes to avoid so that you can save time and money in your build. Mistake number five is doing everything on the lead record. Sometimes we see people put all of their information, their sales process from start to finish on the lead record. The lead record is designed to be a triage zone. It's like your catch-all bucket for when you've got leads online or when they're coming through your online forms, your website, maybe the chat application. And sometimes those can be a little bit junky, particularly if you're running things like ads, Google ads, Facebook ads, etc. So having your leads area is a great place to filter before you let them into your wider database, before you let them into the area we are actually gonna process the, the contact, the account, the deal, that sort of thing. So by doing everything on the, on the lead record, you're kind of exposing the junk to your process. So if you wanna make it a bit clearer, if you wanna take advantage of more of the reports and things that are actually in the system and use the system the way it's designed to be built, then the best way that you can do that is use the other objects in the system and not just the lead record only. Mistake number four. Now this one's a pretty simple mistake, but quite often we see no lead conversion mapping. That means that when you've converted a lead, let's just say you've collected all the information at the start, you've had the conversation, you've made sure to grab an address, a phone number, uh, an email, and then you wanna convert that lead into a contact, an account, and a deal. But in that process, data goes missing. Why does it go missing? Because you haven't mapped the field. So if you create a field on the lead record, you also have to create that same field wherever you want it to go, be it the, the contact, the account, the deal. And then that field has to be a, a similar type or has to be able to accept that information. For example, a number field can't take text. So you need to make sure that a text field goes to a text field. Then you need to go into the lead field mapping and make sure that those two are linked so that when you move information from here to here, that it actually arrives. The other thing that a lot of people miss is when they're uploading information. So let's just say I do a trade show, I've got a spreadsheet of information and some of the pick list values may not be the same. So for example, I've got a pick list value in my own CRM database saying state, you know, Queensland, Northern Territory, Victoria, etc. And let's just say at this trade show, they have extra values. Yes, we've got our standard states, but they might also separate Solomon Islands or Lord Howe Island or something like that. So if they do that and you import those values, they will turn up in the leads, but when you convert the record, they won't turn up in the contacts accounts or deals. And the other problem that you have is that when you're converting those leads, you cannot report on values that are not stored within the settings of the system. So even though it would display Lord Howe Island, it would not be able to report on Lord Howe Island. It would just be an additional value that's there to look at. Mistake number three, adding duplicate fields. A lot of times we see people adding fields and then they ha later on they have an idea and they wanna add another field. And then they have another idea and they wanna add another field. But they haven't really had to think about why they would need that field. They've just kinda put it in there for that little use case or for that one particular client, but they probably should have just put it in the notes field or thought about it a different way and they just added it as a pick list value to an existing field. And so often we get a lot of repeat fields trying to do similar things. I think really you should just stop and take a look at your entire customer base before adding a field. Don't just add one for one customer because that doesn't give you the ability to scale that up. Unless you're gonna run an automation off it, unless you're gonna do something with it for reporting, it probably shouldn't be there. Or if it adds real value, for example, you've got qualitative and quantitative value. Quantitative value is how many people live in Queensland. Qualitative value might be, what's their favorite coffee? 
It builds relationship and rapport. So I see value in that field, particularly in you know high net worth conversations, but it may not be necessary in a cleaning business. So don't add fields for the sake of it. Make sure that when you do add fields, you stop, step back, have a look at your whole system and make sure there isn't something already that exists there. Because the problem then is that we have to go and fix that field, extract all the data and then re-import all the data into that new field. And sometimes that mapping can be a little bit tricky. Now, as we go, these mistakes are getting more and more complex. And these last two are doozies. Mistake number two, using custom modules instead of the standard modules. So you've got four main objects in the system, leads, contacts, accounts, and deals. If you're not using those, then you are doing something wrong. Sometimes we see people set up their own custom opportunity module or their own custom contact module or their own custom deal module because they feel as though they need to break out a certain segment of customers or they feel that they want to do it their own way and start from scratch. But the problem is you miss out on all the analytics. You miss out on all of the integrations with your email systems. You miss out on the task related objects. And that creates a lot of problems architecturally in the back end when later you decide you want to use those features. It often means we end up having to rebuild the entire application onto those standard objects. It's not as hard to fix as some others because generally people are replacing existing features with custom features, but it can be quite painful when you're trying to map data together. Mistake number one, this is the worst thing that you can do in your CRM and you should avoid it at all costs. And that is trying to build everything off the contact record. Quite often we see people, they don't really understand the major parts of the system or why it exists. And you might think, hmm, I've got a simple business or I only deal with contacts. But if you miss using the system architecture, the way it's designed to be used, then you miss out on so many features of functions. And after a certain point, the rebuild to this one can be an absolute doozy. We have one organization, quite large actually, had someone come in and tell them that they needed to do everything off the contact record. Next thing you know, we're triggering workflows off on top of workflows on top of workflows and you make one little change over here and it affects the entire chain of things in the process and all we're trying to do is sell a product. So ideally by having your leads, contacts, accounts and deals, now you can break down those separate elements into reportable things but you can also then hang different things off those elements. For example, on the deals module you can now add products off those products, you can now add timelines to delivery. But if you're trying to do everything on the contact record, you can't go that advanced. And once you do try to go that advanced, now you're running out of fields. Now you're running out of API limits. You're running out of workflows. You just cannot do anything with the, the system on the contact record. You are not using the power of the system at all. And it is incredibly frustrating to try and break it again to then rebuild it the way it's supposed to be built. So that is the top five worst things that you can do in your Zoho CRM. If you've done any of those, or even if you think you've done any of those and you want to check, reach out to us. You can work with us by clicking the link in the description. If you need a bit more help, join our Relevate community. We do weekly meetups, we do screen shares. If you've got a question, you can ask us there and then we'll either create a video for you or we'll answer you in the comments. If you found this video useful, don't forget to give us a like, a subscribe, and let us know what you thought in the comments. I hope you've enjoyed watching. And if so, you might also like to watch this video.